Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid. We are hopping back into Lord of the Flies with Lemuria, and we are deep in the late game as it is turn 93. Um, and we're getting close to the end of the game. Uh, the game has ended for me, and I'm going to go ahead and play through the rest of it. And for... well, I don't know if you can actually see the, the turn screen, but if you do get a chance to see it, you'll see... I think I the, the game ends on turn 108, 109, something like that. So, we're very close. Turn 93. Uh, we get attacked by some horrors, our uh, thaumaturgs die, uh, disease demons are killing us, as per usual. Uh, here you can see our troll king managed to fight off a disease demon. Let's see if he actually gets disease though, he might. I do have recuperation as my bless, so I can give him uh, a shroud. Okay, he's already diseased, so it doesn't even matter. Um, disease demons do in fact disease you, so can be good to do on thugs, even if uh, you don't expect it will kill them. Uh, we got attacked by Eater of Dreams. I'll just show you because this is a Doomhar. Check out his stats real quick. Pretty special. Uh, very easy for him to one-hit kill you, even with the Ring of Returning. Let's see what I've got on this guy. Yeah, no gear, so I was expecting for him to die. Um, and then what else? Now, one thing that I've kind of made a mistake of this game that I could have done a lot better um, is you really don't want your Grand Lemurs casting uh, Revive Grand Lemur. You really want to get uh, Wraith Kings, which are these guys, our Wraith Lords. They're 40 gems, so they're, I think, what, they're a little bit more, no, they're cheaper than your Grand Lemurs. They're still Death 3, so they can cast it. Um... And they respawn faster, so all around they're way better if you have Astral Corruption up to cast uh, Summon Grand Lemur. Um, uh, but, what I will say is because they are so much better, they respawn faster, and they tend to get harm marked faster. But really it's just accelerating everything, which is something you would probably want to do anyway, rather than distribute horrors amongst many mages. Because um, once they're harm marked, you can't really use them. Um, we get attacked by another assassin, and this is a very pesky little assassin here. I really should be trying to, like, mind hunt this guy out or something. His magic resistance is not terribly high, and that's going to be the best way to get rid of him, but Astral Corruption being up is going to make me not want to do that. Um, so, um, uh, in this case, he his Claw of Kyo... Kokiotos, or however the hell you say that, is going after one of my dudes, uh, and not after my main dude. So we'll see what happens here. I actually don't... Okay, he ran. Did... Wait, did we kill him? Uh, no. Apparently this is a different RNG. So, uh, we died in the real version. Um, okay, coming in, um... This actually is not a horrible trade here. Um, we were attacking Utgard with just a small little army. And uh, it was supported by a mage. I think this guy was set up to cast Wind of Death. Yeah. Um, and he has a fair amount, of, not just PD. I, well, okay, I'm not sure. These may be PD. But we've got Decay on a bunch of them. Let's see what it would actually was. They may have been PD. Okay, it was PD, so this was just a waste, and I wasted all these dudes and the gems and all that, so unfortunate. Um, but if he had dudes patrolling, it would have been good. Um, Ill Earth comes in, kills a bunch of our dudes. Let's actually see what happened here, because I think this was the fire-empowered vampire, and then Ill Earth is kitted out like a thug. So he's got two bloodthorns, which are life drain, uh, and then uh, a lightning, oh no, an ice helmet, and then some armor. He's going to be pretty hard to kill. And I think this guy... Oh, he's Astral Empowered. Very cool. Kind of edgy, but cool. He can theoretically do Soul Drain, which is one of the better spells in the game. Okay, anyway, they will have no trouble chopping through that. Um, and then we come down here. And, uh, oh, you know what I didn't do? I usually kick off these episodes. Uh, I got wrecked here, by the way. Uh, by kind of saying what happened in the last one. Um, and what happened in the last episode was I finally got Vengeful Waters up, which is kind of going to be game-changing for me. Because um, I'm kind of... Okay, I just had a bunch of dudes retreat, and then a Wind of Death spam. 
So we got quite a few Wind of Deaths off, um, and that should kill everybody, and I think these guys are also going to run. Oh no, I guess I have them scripted to cast. I probably should have had them run. Don't know if I'm going to get the giants. Yeah, I'll get a lot of them. Okay. So, not all the giants with decay on them died. Um... I think that was this battle. This one. Okay, so all in all, we killed a fair amount of hurlers, which is pretty good. Uh, some other Seth Konas, a Necromancer, and two Jarls. Um, all for a little bit of chaff, and then my Grand Lemur who's going to respawn in a few death gems. Pretty good deal. Um, because now Utgard is small enough that any economic damage we do is going to be very hard for him to recover from. So I'm definitely okay doing economic trades with him at this point. Um, and uh, if you recall, he was really doing a good job raiding me with thugs and even scouts. Just, you know, like if I didn't have PD or something, he was always pinging my provinces. Um, and that was making, you know, it was stopping my undead from free spawning because if you don't control your forts, they won't free spawn there. Um, and okay, we've got a big army here. Let's go watch this. Um, but now that I have Vengeful Waters up, it should uh, significantly change how the game plays. Okay, so here we've got a big clump, which is probably not the best formation. Um, but I think we are getting army of whatever. Yeah, so I think we got army of lead on these guys. No point. Okay, but that hurts. So he's got a big communion, and that was uh, Shimmering Fields, which is a very, very powerful evocation spell. Um, and she can cast it because she's part of a communion due to this crystal matrix. You can see it gave her the communion master status. Um, so that's not good because Shimmering Fields is going to wreck um, things with Army of Gold on it because it's armor negating damage, so it doesn't care that I have 20 protection. Um, and I have shock uh, susceptibility now, so it will do extra damage. So that did not really go according to plan. Um, I think this guy may die. Yeah, rest in peace. Oh, run! Run! Oh, he gets trapped right there at the end. I don't think you're going to make it out of there, buddy. Let's see, the battle may actually be different, because that was really close whether he lived or not. Uh, which one was it? One of these... Okay, it was this one. Did my... Did he live? Okay, in the in the real version, he got out. So I got lucky there. Um, not really worth it to me. Uh, we killed off a little bit of his chaff, but not very much. And we lost a lot of our chaff. So not very happy with that. Um, but in general, even though it was not a good trade, uh, probably still worse for him, but I would just rather not take such bad trades. Um, because it's going to be very difficult for him to replenish his stuff. Um, and then you can see uh, Ventral Waters doing its thing. So we're killing some Sith Konas. Uh, we are killing uh, a Servant of the Oracles from Agartha, because our dominion is in the Agartha area. Uh, we did not kill this Starchild, and that was probably because this uh, Starchild is an assassin, and so it has a water bottle. And so he will probably win in that case. Um, but, you know, at least I know where an assassin is now. Um, okay, anyway, you can see, I, I actually read a thread on Discord the other day, or not thread, but somebody was talking about how Vengeful Waters is not that great. Um, and I think you have to understand what it's good for. It's not good at killing thugs, or like very elite commanders. What it's good for is preventing people from bringing large, amount, large amounts of mages to fight you. Uh, because um, generally large numbers of mages uh, are not going to be kitted with very good equipment where they can hold off an ice elemental on their own. Um, so that is generally what it's going to be good for, which is extremely good for me because my forts are a little difficult to break. Uh, I'm pretty good against normal troops, uh, but I'm rather weak against mages. So here you can see it's very good. Um, other good things... Um, you can see we have a Bane Venom Charm on top of Utgard's capital, which he is not going to be very happy about. 
Now, honestly, I probably should keep it here, but it's highly likely if he sees his cap getting Bane Venom Charmed, he's going to patrol. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a Bane Venom Charm is, uh, it gives you Reaper 10, and so that means I think it kills off 10% of the population every turn, which is pretty ridiculous. Very, very strong item, especially on Pop Kill Nations, um, and it does not make you many friends. But anyway, we're going to sneak over this way because we do expect to kind of get killed. Um, we do not have a Bane Venom Charm here at the moment, though we have... This guy's obviously moving in. Um, so, and if you recall, I you know I had said I attacked on top of Utgard, and I was really what I was doing is, and I attacked with a Wind of Death thing. The thing is, he's not really going to kill my Bane Venom Charm dude unless he patrols, and if he patrols, then my Bane Venom Charm dude, I mean, then the Wind of Death will kill his chap inside. If he doesn't patrol, then my Bane Venom Charm dude is going to live. So, in a way, it's a catch-22. You know, he's not really going to win either way. Um, but the other really important thing about having Vengeful Waters up now is that um, all these areas, which were kind of hotly contested, um, he's going to have a very hard time contesting. Um, like this, he cannot move any Mage Core army in here. In fact, if anybody's stuck inside, they're going to get assassinated. I think there may have been a... No, there wasn't. Um, but you can see I raided it real quick, and he had just one PD. Um, and this area becomes much safer. Um, in other news, though, we see this Storm Demon army is looking huge. Um, and I've talked about it before, why these guys are so good, but I will talk about it again. Um, Storm Demons do bonus range damage based on their strength. So if you give put them in a storm, they have storm power, they get bonus strength, and if uh, you give them bloodlust, which if you're a blood nation, you'll do, um, they're going to have bonus strength. So they do a ton of damage. Uh, it's almost all shock damage. Um, so that's the one weakness, is you can kind of block most of it with shock resistance, but shock resistance is really hard to come by in large amounts. Um, and these guys are going to be doing like 20 shock damage, so you're never going to buff up an army to survive a storm demon attack unless you have major and minor shock resistance in your bless. Um, so, uh, this is going to be a problem. Um, yeah. The other thing is they have plenty of shock resistance, like enough. So if you cast uh, army of gold or lead or something on them, they will be extremely hard to kill, and they won't have any elemental weaknesses. So, uh, yeah, they're probably the, one of the best late-game troops. Um, I mean, they are a reason to play certain nations because you can mass them in the late game, and it's a very fun strategy. Um, so, with that, let's kind of zoom out. We'll talk about our strategy here. Um, my goal is to keep I mean, Midgard is going to attack me. I don't know when, but he's planning on it. <laughs> um, he probably wants to try to take Vengeful Waters down now before he attacks, but he was probably ready to attack me like this turn or last turn. Um, so, yeah, hopefully this buys us a little time. Um, my plan, I want to take this throne and this throne that may get me to the throne victory condition. Uh, I'm pretty close. I've got um, one, two, three, four. I've got four thrones. And then have I claimed this one yet? Okay, I have, but I haven't claimed this one. So if I, I think if I get all three of these, if this is a level two, that will give me four more points. That'll be really close. If I get that one and this one, then I'll win. Uh, but I need to do that before this guy comes in. Like, even if he takes one throne, if I can't stop this army, then it's possible that... He claims this, and then he marches down and claims this, and he has other Storm Demon armies which could take the thrones. Like, if I can't... If you cannot stop several armies uh, at all, there's a good chance that like those armies can just take the requisite thrones, not really worry about conquering the whole map, and win. Because, like, I'll, ra I'll win in a raiding war, but at this point in the game, if I raid his stuff, it's more the thrones that matter. Um... But I usually don't like doing all-ins where I totally go for thrones. I think that's the play here if you're playing Midgard. Um, I usually like to get the land as well as the thrones. But you can see we're going here. We're making a play for the throne. 
Um, we're storming the castle. We've got a bunch of stuff. We've got life drain spam. Oh, he doesn't have the the gear. Uh, this guy's doing life drain spam. We're doing wailing winds, anti magic, army of gold. Uh, I think that's about it. We so we we don't have a ton of stuff going off, um, but we have a lot of dudes. So hopefully this works, but it may not. Um. So the other good thing about getting this throne is it's going to spread some dominion, and as my dominion gets all up in this place, then uh, it will be very difficult for Midgard to swoop in and kill me. Um, the final thing, and I think Midgard and I might actually have a nap still, um, but like this is the kind of nap where like we're conveniently not attacking each other, but uh, clearly there's <laughs> uh, like a cold war going on. Um, but I want to talk real quick about defending this throne. Um, I've got a ton of dudes inside. I've got, um, a thousand dudes. Some of these are good at defending forts. Some are really bad, like this guy's really bad. But these ones are actually okay. I think these are going to be 0.5 for siege defense. So, um, and then I've got, I don't know, 600 dudes here. Um... My siege defense is probably close to like 300, if I had to guess, 350, 400 maybe at the top. Um, flyers get a bonus and they have reasonably high strength, so um, he would, I think, gradually be able to break through this fort. Um, my goal, though, to stop that is to use Itimu, who is a huge badass. Um, now, he's got 15 shock resistance, because I gave him a storm spool, but this ultimately is probably not enough. Um, so he's going to be patrolling, and I think... I'm not doing it yet. Well, there's a few things. One is my Bless, because I have the Throne of Storms, is going to give me plus 5 shock resistance, so that will kick him up to 20. And I think he's uh, scripted for Stone Skin, not Iron Skin, and Resist Lightning. If that goes, and sometimes it may not cast, um, he could get up to maybe 25, which would be pretty good. Um, so the I actually asked around a lot on the forums and was like, hey, what can you do late game against Storm Demons? And the overwhelming answer was not much. <laughs> um, but um, on my own, I kind of came up with a strategy. Um, and my strategy is two parts. One is Vengeful Waters, which I have up. And the second is super combatants that are geared specifically to fight storm demons. So uh, using Itimu, if it's only storm demons, I can give him enough shock resistance where he can kill basically an unlimited number. Um, but if they're bringing astral mages or a bunch of other weird mages, then, you know, like they could charm him or enslave him or soul slay him. Um... Or, you know, like, his fire resistance isn't very high if he had fire mages. You know, there's something they could do to kill him with a large mage core. Um, but if it's only storm demons, we can kill him. So Vengeful Waters is hopefully going to take care of the mages, and um, this guy will take care of the storm demons. So that is my plan. I don't know if it will work. Well, I do, because the game's ended. But at this point in the game, I do not know if it's going to work. Um... The thing I need to build for him, too, is I need to make copper plate. I was kind of clicking around here to see if I'm making it yet, and I'm not. Uh, because, um, clue to the future, this is not quite enough shock resistance. Um, okay, so now we'll talk real quick about general movement and strategy. Um, this fort is not broken, though it is getting quite close. Basically, we're going to hang tight here. I'm moving in some more dudes so that potentially we could kick these dudes off. Um, unfortunately, the dudes I have on top, um, I think it's got a reasonable mage core. Yeah. Yeah, with, with these guys, now we killed some of them, um, so that's good with the wind of death, but there's still a fair number on top. Um, so anyway, we're moving this guy in so we can potentially raid. Um, I'm gonna kind of exert raiding pressure. 30 dudes is kind of enough to take most PD. Um, so we'll raid here. Uh, I should be raiding here too. I'm not really 
Um, I moved a ton of guys here. Um, and kind of the plan, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on top of this province, and I'm gonna bring a really big army here. I've got my troll king who survived. Um, he's going to come in with uh, a bunch of these dudes. We've got uh, Darkness going up, Rigor Mortis, any magic and vulnerability, Soul Vortex. And if he's expecting I raid here, maybe with a small army, hopefully I can bite off like a small little anti-raiding army and kill them. That's kind of the idea. Um, the other thing is I don't want... I don't want him to kill this army, right? And I'm a little worried if he moves everything from his capital and attacks me here that I would lose. So, yeah. We're gonna move here and then come back this way. Um... So anyway, I also kind of like being unpredictable as to like whether I'm going to continue sieging a fort or not. Um, the guys staying here are going to be doing Power of the Spheres and then Bone Grinding. This script actually doesn't work. Um, I thought if, because Bone Grinding only costs one gem, that you could still cast it uh, if you had enough extra gems. But extra gems can only boost your path one level. Uh, but this will work, Wind of Death. So I'm kind of assuming this big Doom stack comes here and attacks me. If it does, we'll Wind of Death him. Uh, and potentially bone grinding, but I'm quite sure this won't work, actually. Um, so up here, yeah, I already talked about this one. We're storming that fort. We're also geared up to storm this fort. And um, this one, we have um, a very similar kind of retinue of troops. We've got anti-magic coming up uh, with some drain life spam on advanced and cast spells. I think we have enough mages with the right scripts, etc., uh, to kill kind of these super combatant ice devils he's been using as uh, super combatants. Um, we've got Army of Gold, Rigor Mortis. Um, this guy's doing Swarm, which is of dubious use, but whatever. Um, Darkness, Rigor Mortis, and then uh, Wailing Winds. So this actually is kind of our stronger stack. Um, so it's highly unlikely we lose this battle. Um, this battle we could lose. Um, the only thing is, of course, he does have this Ice Devil here, which is probably going to come and hit one of our big stacks. Um, and he will be very hard to kill, but I think we will have the tools here to do it. Um, the only thing I'll say is I do not have a Drain Life Spammer here, so that is kind of a, a weakness. Uh, but anyway, um, that's basically it. We're going to try to take this. This is going to be a very important theater for winning the game. I need this throne and this throne, and then um, I need this one and potentially this one. So this one I'm almost surely going to get because he can't keep mages here due to my dominion. Um, this one also is in my dominion. I will probably get it eventually, um, though I'm not sure exactly when. And I think that's it for this turn. Uh, I'm going to do at least two turns per episode from here on out, even though it's, we're already at 20 minutes. I just kind of think it's a little faster for the upload schedule because I only... I don't know. We're just going to do two turns. We're going to get through this. Um, 94. Um, a message from Lemuria. Uh, oh, I sent a message out to the world. God, Astral Corruption has been up so long. It's been up now for like, at least, I think it's 50 turns. I mean, we could go back and check, but it's been up for a long time. Uh, we cast Wizard Tower. Um, and survive. We ca Where do we cast it? We cast it here. So we're kind of laying claim to this, pushing Ryla back ever slowly. Um, and then once I have Wizard Tower up, Oh, he did assassinate a dude here. Um, and the way this works... This guy's basically toast, because even though he's patrolling, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, because the the patrol order goes after the assassination order. So he's going to assassinate me, kill me, then I'd patrol, and when I otherwise kind of would have killed him. So anyway, too bad. Um, we're going to go through the rest of the events. Uh, we get attacked by a Defiler of Dreams. Uh, a disease demon. We actually kill that. Uh, Lich Queen, we get attacked by Mind Slime Harmor and we die, which is a bit unfortunate, but that is kind of the life of our Pretender God now. Um, oh, actually, this is important here. Um, we actually kill this wolf, and I think this is his uh, assassin. And this is his assassin who can kind of permanently kill me. Okay, so he does claws of uh, Kokiotos, or however you say it. 
Um, but then we have a, a lot of dudes, and so, yeah, we kill them. Pretty sweet, huh? Not bad. Uh, so anyway, rip one of his immortal killing assassins. And, um... See if we have any big battles here. We'll take a quick look at score graphs too, I think, after this. Um, because I think that will really reflect how this war with Utgard is going. Oh, wow, we got a big battle here. Um, and I don't think I talked about this uh, last turn, how we were kind of preparing for it. But um, Ryla has moved in with a big old army, right? And we can see he's got a fair number of his mages. He's got a mage of spring, no doubt to do something interesting. Um, he's got a Nyad who can cast Foul Vapors or something else. Very versatile mage. Um, we've got Star Spawn. This is presumably for... He could be doing Master and Slave. So a lot of gems. Uh, he could also be doing Solar Brilliance, which would be really good. But let's see what, what happens. Okay, um, so he, this Fairy Queen, it looks like, is casting Storm. Uh, let's see what else happens. Um, that's, okay, so Storm is up now. Light of the Northern Star. Um, I've got Army of Gold. Oh, somebody cast Doom. Now, I think that was somebody over here, because I would not have cast it. Sometimes you can kind of see who's casting it. I don't see a doom on this side. Maybe I cast it by accident? Okay, that's a mistake. <laughs> I don't really want to doom myself, especially with immortals, but... Or maybe doom... I think doom... I can't remember. Maybe it doesn't get your own guys. Um, okay, so I'm going to zoom out now. We'll kind of take a grand look at this battle. Um, my troops are pretty well buffed up at this point. Um, unfortunately, we are susceptible to shock. So he has a few air mages that are going to do a lot of damage. Um, but against normal troops, it's, we're basically in a vulnerable. 20 protection, uh, body uh, ethereal. It's going to be really hard to hurt us. And I think our magic resistance is pretty high. Yeah, 16. We're not um, super vulnerable to um, banishment, even. The thing that's really going to hurt us is the lightning bolts. Uh, we've got rigor mortis up, though. So if we survive enough of kind of the alpha strike, then all his mages and priests are going to fall asleep. I do not believe he has relief. So these guys, yeah, we have no reinvigoration. So all we have to do is survive enough of the evocation spam for his army to fall asleep. Because my ghosts are not very killy. They kind of don't kill things very quickly. I'm going to speed it up here. But basically we've got Rigor Mortis, Darkness, uh, Light of the Northern Star. I think that was his side. And then Storm was his. Um, we'll go ahead and check his mage cord. Now, he's got a lot of these mages of the spring, but you can see most of these guys are fatigued out now. And, uh, while they'll cast the occasional spell, if they come out of their little slumber, a lot of them are never going to wake up again, uh, unless the battle ends. And they, they win. Uh, but I think, just looking at it right now, um, I think I have enough dudes that survived the initial wave that we're going to chew through his stuff. Um, because his stuff is not really buffed very well, and my stuff is. I mean, these Thralls, they have 10 protection. That's not going to cut it. Now, because my ghosts don't kill anything quickly, we are going to kick it into high gear here. And 
and you can see the mages have completely fallen asleep. Now it's possible the battle time's out. Because my ghosts, as I said, do not kill very quickly. Uh, this is a nation, because you have free... Basically all the free spawn nations, you really do want to get Rush of Strength, which is a blood spell. Um, now, research on Lemuria is not awesome. Um, if you build more labs, it's probably a little better. But, um... Yeah, it would be really... Rush of Strength will actually increase your damage output by a good bit, which is pretty important. Because um, you can see we bear... It takes us so long to chew through that line, and it wasn't even buffed up. If he got Army of Gold or Lead or something out where they had 20 protection, I mean, forget about my ghost doing damage. Um... But anyway, you can see that went really well for us. Um, we lost 120 dudes, which is nothing, uh, and we killed everything. Everything. So the not every single mage, except for a, a couple cultists, which are priests. Um, yeah, I mean, a huge, huge win for us. So, um, And that was actually us attacking him. So very, very, very good for us. Um, He's got a lab here, so I went and restocked all my uh, my stuff. We're patrolling in case he has assassins lurking around. Um, and we will continue uh, down through the events. Um, uh, we get killed here, this little dude. Not very important. It looks like Utgard wins this battle. We'll just check it out real quick. I'll put it uh, in high speed. Okay, this does not look like a battle I should be losing. Um, not totally sure what happens. Okay, we've got Shimmering Field coming out again. Okay, I think that's what happens. You know, that is a spell I don't see very often. Uh, like, very, very, very rarely. Uh, but you can see my guys all route. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Some of my mages, though, are frozen with rigor mortis. So that's unfortunate. Um, that was this one, Egeria? Yeah. So uh, we kill some stuff. Um, just trash. We don't get any of his mages. Uh, we lose a Grand Lemur, uh, one of the Acolytes. And 700 undead. That's not great for us. Um, so, okay. Uh, and then we have a battle in the fort. We were going to storm this fort in Jira, but we didn't. Uh, because our army got beaten when they charged out and fought us. Uh, and then here we're trying to storm this fort. Um, and there's nothing inside. So... Uh, fair enough. So, anyway, we've lost some battles, but we are winning the war. Um, we see Ryla attacking Agartha, I mean Abyssia, or the province of Abyssia, which is now under control of Agartha. Uh, and they kill all of Agartha's little dudes. Um, and then we have a big slew of vengeful waters. Um, we see they, uh, the vampire lord lives. Uh, we kill another Sith Kona. Uh, and I am going to click on these, because I kind of want you to get a sense for... The kill ratio uh, of these ice elementals, they do an excellent job killing um, these kind of crappy little mages and priests, which are things you want to bring in abundance when you're fighting Lemuria. So very, very good in this situation. Now this is not a spell which I put up very often. Um, normally, I think the differences and why it's good on this nation is um, normally if you're going to win the game, you're going to have armies which can beat other player armies. And if you're doing that and you're planning on winning, you want to be on the offensive and attacking and all these things. Now, Vengeful Waters is great, and there's still other situations where you would want to have it up. Um, but uh, the special thing about Lemuria is many, many times I cannot kill a very, very... Sh My best army will not be able to kill another player's best army many, many times. So uh, that's why it's so important that I have this spell, because it allows me um, to situationally play defensively. Um, so anyway, um, from looking at all these, um, not counting the scout attacks, uh, we probably killed about half of the dudes, like the priests we get. Yeah. 
Norna, we got... Yeah, so we get about half of them. Um, got attacked by some Indies. And I think that's about it. So we'll, we'll uh, first zoom all the way out to look at the score graphs. Um, and you can see, I think this is when we started attacking Utgard. Right? And we got some provinces, right? But this was when Utgard got really smart. Came down here, right? And then we kind of got back up here. This is when I think I had a couple stales. We fell back down, but now we're kind of way back up. We're as high as we've ever been on province count, which means, especially if you compare to right back down here, before we started the war with Utgard, uh, things are going very, very well for us. Um, forts, it's been a much more gradual and steady upward trend. Though we did lose a few to Utgard, we are now back to a record high. Um, income, let's not look at that graph. That's embarrassing, right? Uh, gym income, we're doing okay. Research, fine. Dominion. This is really like the, this is kind of the accelerator for your army graph, right? So the higher this is, the more you produce a turn in general. Um, this is our army size. So you can see basically um, we continued growing through the early phases of the war with Utgard, but since he kind of got smart, which was somewhere in here, um, our army size has been pretty constant, which means that Utgard has been killing stuff as fast as we can produce it. Um, this also kind of sheds some light. If if somebody came to help Utgard right now, um, they could turn the tide on me, because he is killing all of my production. So if somebody else came and attacked me, and I had to spend units on them, then uh, basically my army graph would start kind of gradually going down. Right, so I'm not at a point where like I can fight an unlimited number of people, and that's why I really need vengeful water so I can play defensively where I need to. Okay, now um, let's come look up here. So uh, this is where we got our butts kicked um, by this uh, fairy queen with a crystal matrix casting shimmering fields all over us. Um, this is where we took a fort. And uh, we got some nice death gem sites from this too, so very nice. Um, now I kind of don't want to throw, keep throwing big armies at this fort. Um, what I think we're going to do is we're going to split up. We're going to send one big army here, or one small army here. It's kind of like a raiding army. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will just kill PD. And what I'm really thinking is that he's going to patrol here with this army uh, and expect me to move this army in to take this throne from him. And I thought about doing it, but I said instead, let's send something here big enough to probably kill whatever they have, right, but not overcommit, and we'll send our real army over here. And what that will mean is next turn I'll one, uh, I'll one turn storm this fort, and I can move this army off, but he won't be able to move this army all the way through here. And I don't know if he could otherwise if I didn't control this fort, but it's possible with the roads that he could. So anyway, I'm not sure, but he might be able to. The fact this is a wasteland means maybe not, but anyway. Um, so that's basically it, this big army. You didn't really get to see it fight because there was nothing inside this fort, but next episode hopefully you'll get to see it uh, do that. Um, we're also going to send a thug on top. I want to just start locking up the... Uh, these forts so he can't move units between them. And um, down here, uh, you can see our scout. Oh. Yeah, I think we had two dudes here who were Bane Venom Charming. Anyway, they got caught, so they have to run. But um, where are they now? One of them is here. And we're going to move her back over this way. Where's the other one? Okay, I think I just had a scout on top. Um, anyway, we're sieging this up too, which is kind of good. Uh, eventually we will hopefully break through here. I really want to get my dominion here too. I don't really have anybody who can preach. Um, here you can see we're also killing a lot of these. Um, Seth Kona, which are an important part of this army. Um, this group, we're actually, I don't really want to fight these guys. Actually, we're just going to move down here and take this. Um, and this will hopefully give me a little income kick, because my income's getting really low. I'm barely breaking even on income. 
Um, a lot of times, this is Lemuria. Uh, you want to recruit indie mages, but um, you know, eventually, if you don't keep growing, and like right now, I'm not really growing fast enough for my income to be high, because your income goes to zero when your empire is not growing. Um, you can very easily become income negative. So anyway, uh, we'll take this. Hopefully this gives me some income. Um, and I don't think that's a mage supported army. So that will be kind of easy for me to take. Um, I'm just, if we can, the other thing too is because I've got scouts everywhere, I can see what he's patrolling with. Whoops. Uh, and this, I don't believe, is a very strong patrolling army. It's basically just chaff with, like, one dude. So um, I'm going to move a chaff army in, and I think that these guys should be able to kill his chaff. Because uh, I actually have pretty high-quality chaff when fighting other chaff, but very low-quality chaff when it comes to, you know, killing elites. Um, here we can see we killed... Uh, this is finally some of the ice elementals kind of doing their thing. And you remember he had a big army here when he took this back. And he's got a lot of mages. He's probably going to go ahead and move these guys out. He did break siege here. <coughs> uh, reasonably uh, effectively. So uh, he's probably going to move all these guys back. Um, I've got all of these guys here. And I want to take this, but I also don't really want to fight all these guys. Um, so we're skittishly, uh, this fort is popped, but I'm kind of thinking he's going to move an army big enough out here to kill me. Um, and what I would much rather do is instead of rolling the dice and having him potentially kill another big army, um, I'm going to move all my guys out here and sit on this fort, hopefully one turn pop it, and he basically can't do anything to stop me. So rather than roll the dice on this fort, we are going to basically guaranteed pick up this one. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and move... This guy's going on top of this throne. Um, and the other thing now, Agartha is basically dead, and this is in my dominion, so uh, we're going to move an army out to take this. I've got four chaff groups coming in. I didn't even script them. I probably should have. But anyway, we're going to claim this, and then we're probably going to go fight uh, Ryla up here and take these caps. Um, so I think that is about it for this turn and therefore for this episode but you can kind of see how it's going we're um even that utgard's been beaten down his medium kind of better armies can still take my better armies now if i put tons of grand lemurs in one army i could probably still kill him but i don't know because yeah maybe with rigor mortis as it goes later but in theory, if he has Sith Konas with Jotun Hurlers and he has mass regeneration and Soul Vortex, like Rigor Mortis isn't going to stop that. Uh, yeah, very possible he could even still win. So uh, what we're still trying to do is to hit him in more places than he can possibly defend, uh, take forts from him, and uh, generally try to kind of dodge his armies while taking his infrastructure. That's kind of our goal right now. Um, but if, if at any time I see him using like non-mage supported armies like right here or right here, then we strike uh, with a ton of ferocity and try to definitely engage. But where we think he has strong mage supported armies, we're kind of running. Um, and I, that, I think that's definitely how I play Lemuria. I think you don't have to. Um, especially if you have things that you think, like, if I were to have super combatants that could theoretically kill some of those armies. I don't think I do. Because Death Communions, too, they, like, if you have undead super combatants, Death Communions will kill, uh, undead super combatants with Wither Bones and Dust to Dust and a bunch of stuff. So, I think I'm playing this right. Uh, but anyway, I think that's it. So... Um, we're going to continue to try to take Utgard's infrastructure before this huge uh, Midgardian army jumps in and kills us. And uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, tune in next time.